Certain angles result in exact values, so those angles are in fact 0, pi on 6, pi on 4, pi on 3, pi on 2, and pi, and multiples thereof. Now, when you get to a Maths Methods Technology free paper, these values you need to know and their answers. Here's a selection of those answers in table format. We've already been exploring 30 degrees or pi on 6 pre in previous videos, uh, but however, we've got a bunch of the values as uh, in cos, as for 10, for 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. Now, committing it to memory can be a bit of a challenge. Some people prefer to use the table. Some people have other weird sort of hand thing, memory things. Personally, I prefer the exact values triangle. In fact, you've already seen some of it in the previous videos. Here is what I call the exact values triangle. It's actually made up of two right angle triangles back to back. The triangle on the right has a base of 1 and a height of 1. The triangle on the left has a hypotenuse of 2 and it shares that same height of 1. So using Pythagoras, I can deduce that the hypotenuse for the triangle on the right is root 2 and the remaining side on the right angle triangle on the left is root 3. Now we have encountered these triangles before and so you can pretty much identify which angle belongs where. The one on the right, since it was half of a square, because that's one, these sides are one and one, that means we cut the angle that would normally be there if it was a square, would normally be 90 degrees, so it's 45 degrees or pi on four, and it will have the same angle here, pi on four. On the, uh, on the ones on the left, what you'll be able to do is to try to figure out which one, which angle is which. Now, I could use my memory or I can actually use that table to deduce. The table here says that the sine of pi on 6 is equal to 1 half. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So with the one on the left, I need to find out which angle would result in this ratio. I have two choices. I've got the angle down here. I've got the angle up here, which I have symbolized with a beta. So which angle is going to give me a sine value of one half or one over two? So I need to know which one has the opposite 1 and the hypotenuse 2. So opposite, well, one. there's the 1 here, so in the middle here. And so the hypotenuse is 2, 1 over 2. So which, uh, the beta, for beta here, that one is an adjacent, so it can't be this one. So therefore, that's this angle here. So that's pi on 6. The angle beta up here would therefore be 90 degrees, take away this pi on 6, or we'll, let's keep all of our measurements the same. This will be pi on 2. So pi on 2, take away pi on 6. So pi on 2, take away pi on 6. So you need to make sure that all of my uh, denominators are the same. So that's going to be 3 pi on 6, take away pi on 6. That's equal to 2 pi on 6 which is equal to pi on three. So then the other question is, how do you remember all of the zeros, pi's and two pi's? Well, this is where the unit circle comes in handy. So as a reminder with our unit circle, that this coordinate here is one zero, that is zero one, this is negative one zero, and that is zero negative one. And this is 0, pi on 2, pi and 3, pi on 2. That looks like a negative. It wasn't meant to be. So when I need to remember which one is which, I can just draw up that uh, unit circle 
And remember that the x value is cos theta and the y value is sine theta. For example, write down the exact values of sine negative 2 pi on 3. So for a start, we need to identify which quadrant that's in. It's negative, so it's going backwards. So there's 0, negative pi on 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi on 2. So it's in the third quadrant, and knowing the values of which quadrant is positive, which one is negative, I know that cos or sine in the third quadrant is negative. So now all I need to do here is to make it equal. So sine negative 2 pi on 3 uh, is equal to sine. And remember, when we're doing the uh, symmetry properties, we rewrite this such that it's negative pi plus pi on 3. So there's my reference angle there. because negative pi is the same as negative 3 pi on 3, and so plus a pi on 3 gets me negative 2 pi on 3. So there's the reference angle. Now I can use my table, uh, but otherwise I will be using my exact values triangle. 2, 1, root 3, uh, 1, root 2, that's pi on 6, pi on 3, and that's pi on 4. So pi on 3 is over here. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So therefore, this is going to be equal to, uh, so negative sine pi on three. The reason why it's negative is because it's in the third quadrant. So it's in the third quadrant. So just to remind us, that's where it is. So this is equal to negative uh, root three over two. So whereabouts is 11 pi on four? Well, I know that 2 pi is 8 pi on 4. How much would 3 pi be worth? Because that's the next one along. So 3 pi would be uh, 4 times 3 is 12 pi on 4. So 11 pi on 4 is going to be lesser than that. So it's going to be in the second quadrant. So this is the second quadrant. And according to my positives and negatives, so therefore it's going to be a negative answer. And the base angle, which I'll write here, so my reference angle or base angle, so this is the pi on fours, which is on the right hand side. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be one is going to be equal to pi on four. And so my answer is going to be in the form of one over root two. Now, how did I get that it was the base angle is pi on 4? It has a denominator of 4. It's going to be a pi on 4. So, I know that cos 11 pi on 4 is equal to cos... And what did we say? It was 3 pi minus pi on 4. And because it's negative, it's going to be equal to negative cos pi on 4. It's equal to negative... 1 over root 2, which you can also write as negative root 2 over 2. So that negative came from the fact that it was in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, it's a negative. The pi on 4 came from the fact that it's got a denominator 4 here. That's the usual key clear getaway um, that will help us identify that that is the uh, base angle. 10, 15 pi on 6. So 10, 15 pi on 6. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to know what quadrant that's in. So 0 pi or 6 pi on 6. 2 pi is uh, 12 pi on 6. 3 pi is 18 pi on 6. Okay, this is really interesting. So we've got 12 pi on 6. We've got 18 pi on 6. 15 pi on 6. That's bizarre. So you'll notice there it's not like one less or one more. 
That's because we need to do a simplification in the original question. See how it says 15 pi on 6? We almost fell for a trap. We should always simplify this fraction. So I'm actually going to rewrite this. This is a rather sneaky little uh, question here. I'm just going to change the pen. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what number fits in both 15 and 6. Well, that would be 3. So 15 pi on 6 is actually 5 pi on 2. So given that in mind, we are using something different. So where is 5 pi on 2? So let's go and use our unit circle. So we've got 0 pi on 2 pi, 3 pi on 2, 2 pi, 5 pi on 2 will be up here. So 5 pi on 2, you might remember, has got the coordinate 0, 1. And 10 of any angle is equal to sine of the angle over cos of the angle, which would be equal to 1 over 0, which is undefined. So therefore, 10 of 5 pi on 2 is undefined.